Hi guys, it's Glenn, and I am here to issue you the Tarot Deck Remix Challenge. TRDC, maybe better acronym, but anyway, the Tarot Deck Remix Challenge. So, what are the two uh, things that define our cultural moment? Remix culture and abundance. Um, what can we say about abundance? So obviously not everybody is um, you know, enjoying this, this time of abundance, but some people are, which is pretty incredible, really. If you look at human history, um, for essentially all of human history, you know, we have struggled with scarcity. And now today, in this you know, sort of 21st century moment, a few of us lucky people, uh, middle class people in the global north, and yes, Australia, that includes you, um, are dealing with abundance, maybe a little more than scarcity. So what can we say about abundance? Well, a couple of things we can say. One, if you have to have a problem, abundance is a much better problem to have than scarcity. Uh, but two, just because it's a better problem to have than scarcity doesn't mean that abundance isn't a big problem. Um, and in fact, while scarcity isn't exactly fun, we really were designed for scarcity. You know, biologically, cognitively, we are designed for scarcity. We have no clue how to grapple with abundance. You see it in these crazy copyright regimes and messed up privacy arrangements and, you know, renting garages because your big house full of stuff isn't enough space to keep all the stuff that you already don't use. So you, we're just, we, have, we are ill-equipped to handle abundance. So, um, I don't know about you, but every time I look at a cool new tarot deck, you know, a little back in my mind, maybe one day I'll summon the, the time and vision and talent and, and create my own deck. Uh, so I'm here to say no, not no for you, but at least for me, I'm never designing my own tarot deck. I mean, partly it's a monumental project, obviously, but beyond that, um, we just don't need another one. There are too many tarot decks. There are too many designed, and I, I have 22 decks at the moment. Uh, I, hope, I hope to acquire no more. We'll, who knows what that'll be. But so I, I've reached one deck for every card in the Major Arcana, and I feel like that's enough decks. Um, some of you may have less than that. I'm sure there are those of you who have way more. You know, whatever, they're, they're fun things to collect. But um, for me, it's enough. I hope to not buy another one, and I definitely don't want to design one. But, you know, considering this abundance and the fact that it's remix culture, um, it occurred to me, or actually, I, I just, my previous vlog was my rant about how Tarot, I, it seems to me, privileges the suit of cups and marginalizes swords. And along the way, I was looking at a lot of cards from a lot of decks, like I was comparing 22 different um, Ten of Swords, for example. And Ten of Swords is an interesting card because there are other cards in the deck where if you go look at 22 different decks, you'll see a lot of variety. And the Ten of Swords, it's amazing if you look at 22 decks, how many of those Tens of Swords are so close to Pamela Coleman Smith. It's, you know, it's, we've taken her exact scene and redone it as, you know, mermaids or angels or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, so now we have a themed deck. Well, new decks are fun and worth using, and that's great. And if, if you are interested in that theme, then that's awesome. Use that deck. But when you just take Pamela Coleman Smith and do literally her exact composition, but recast it toward whatever the theme of your deck is, you've created a themed deck, but you've told me nothing new about this Ten of Swords fullness archetype. Um, and then I got to the Mariel Tarot and came across this amazing card. Um, and I think what seems to happen maybe a lot with Mariel is that when you first look at a card, you say, whoa, this is so different than what I thought this, you know, this card was about. And, you know, all of those Pamela Coleman Smith, you know, clone cards it's a figure on the ground with 10 swords in it. So it's like you, you thought too much and, you know, death by a thousand, or death by 10,000 cuts. And here, you know, we have this um, 
this ominous character, you know, uh, galloping on this beast of burden and wielding this scythe. And is this character coming at you or is this character you? Um, but in any case, it's not just you're dead on the ground, you're a corpse full of swords, but this scythe is going to separate the wheat from the chaff that you've been thinking about a lot of things and that it's not bad that you think, but you know, some of them are really important and maybe many of them are not. And so I, I feel ultimately this card is, is saying some of the same things that the other Tens of Swords are saying, but it's a more complex, more nuanced, uh, for me, more empowering card. And that seems to be something that I've, I've noticed that Marielle seems to do is that at first you think it's really different and after you study it for a little while, it seems maybe to, to pull into the other cards, but to add depth and nuance and resonance. And, you know, I've kind of noticed uh, about spiritual experiences, like, I mean, they could be about spirituality or religion, or they could be about ideology or politics or anything, but spiritual experiences, when someone has a powerful experience, they want to share it and they write it down, they create a text, they codify it. Um, and a couple generations later, somebody's reading that text, which was so powerful for one person, and now this subsequent generation says something like, I don't know, it's just that crap they make us memorize in school. And what I've come to believe is that, you know, yes, we can write books and they're powerful and they're useful, but you cannot distill a spiritual experience. I can't hand you a paragraph and say, read this, and now you will, you know, be, uh, you know, an enlightened being. It doesn't work that way. Um, and so what I find with these Marielle cards very often is that they help you do that work so that you're not just saying the Ten of Swords is, but you're actually experiencing this journey of the Ten of Swords. So anyway, obviously Marielle is an incredible deck. Uh, it took her 14 years to create it, so I mean, it's, just, it's overwhelming. Um, okay, so there's a pretty amazing card. I'm a huge fan of... Ian Daniels, Tarot of Vampires, I like the deck absolutely in general. And particularly, I think this Three of Pentacles is my favorite card in all of Tarot. I love um, that she's a, that it's a maker card, that she's a maker, that she's an artist, more specifically that she's a fiber artist. And she's spinning and weaving. And then we have the additional dimension of, you know, her holding uh, the thread of life. So it's just, it's really a deep, wonderful, marvelous card. So when I looked at all the three of pentacles, there was a lot more diversity than, than the tens of swords. People had gone more places. And certainly when you look at some of the major arcana, people go all over the place with them. Marielle, the whole deck is amazing. Tarot of Vampires, the whole deck is amazing. But I was thinking about all this abundance, abundance of tarot decks and other things and the remix culture that we live in and thought, well, you know, maybe, okay, you, you get where I'm going. So here's my challenge to you and to myself is to go through a bunch of decks, however many you have, don't buy another one, just go through the ones you already have and find, so I just started, I've only done, besides these two that, that kind of launched the whole thing, I've just done my first two cards. The Fool from the Animal Totem Tarot. I love this Grasshopper. It's, it's consistent with a lot of other Fool cards and there are a lot of great Fool cards. Um, but somehow this one just had uh, some of that same innocence, but even more joy and kind of a, a springtime, you know, awakening, beginning. It is just a beautiful card. Um, the Magician, there are so many wonderful Magician cards. In a way, it was a very hard choice. And, and then in another sense, it was no choice at all. Um, really, is there any other Magician card other than Pamela Coleman Smith? Um, of all of the hundreds of years of Tarot and the zillions of decks that are out there, is there any card in any deck that is more recognizable to more people as being Tarot? This, I mean, this is just it. And as with so much of her work, it's, it's so simple and 2D and flat and yet so just loaded with iconography and power. So I'm two cards in to Glenn's Tarot Remix deck. We've got the Fool and the Magician, and I guess I already know what the, the Three of Pentacles and the Ten of Swords will be. So, uh, so I've got four, down, four cards down and 74 to go. Anyway, so my challenge is take your decks, um, a handful, or you know, if you've, got, if you've got too many, you can't even sift through them all, then just pick the handful you want to look through, but take your decks and pull one card from different decks and 
I, I think if you do all that, uh, I think two things will be true about this remix deck that you create. Uh, number one, it will be a very difficult deck to shuffle. Number two, I think it will be a very powerful deck that really speaks powerfully to you about so many of the ideas that you have explored, so much of what Tarot has come to mean for you. So um, I can't imagine I can do more than one card a day, probably less. So this is probably a three month project. I'll be back eventually to show you my completed deck and I would love uh, if you're up for it to see your deck. So there it is, the Tarot Deck Remix Challenge. Enjoy.